Hello, and welcome to the Emotional Self Mastery Podcast, the best podcast on regaining personal power, self-confidence, and peace. I'm your host, Cheryl C. Jones, a transformational life coach, professional speaker, and the author of the book, Emotional Self Mastery. And I'm Kathy Holsher, the producer of this podcast and Cheryl's sidekick. Each week, we explore topics that will help you eliminate negative self-talk, worry, anxiety, and fear, so so you you can can live your best life. A bit of warning, though. This podcast may contain true stories of personal challenges and how they were solved. The information you hear may inspire you to take action in your own life. If you are ready to increase success and happiness and live your best life, listen on. Listener discretion is advised. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Cheryl. Before I ask you what we're talking about today, I have some producer duties. Okay, lay it on me. So, first of all, I want to thank all of our new listeners for their support. Um, It's just been an incredible couple of weeks for us, and so we're overwhelmed. And then secondly, I want to shout out to our very first Facebook groupie. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Her name is, and I think I'm saying this right, Lirio. I believe you are. And she gave us such a wonderful um, comment on on the group, and we just want to say... Thanks and welcome and invite everybody else to it. Absolutely. And we're so glad that one of our podcasts made a difference in your life. That's so awesome. Absolutely. Now, Mm -hmm. what are we talking about today, Cheryl? This subject, I think, is going to be extremely popular. It is the subject of the imposter syndrome. We will be exploring the reality of the phenomenon. It's a phenomenon that virtually everyone experiences in one time or at one time or another in their life. And the funny part is originally it was thought to be something women experience, but the truth is it affects men, women, medical students, marketing managers, celebrities, even actress singer Barbara Streisand has experienced it. Maybe you have too. Kathy. Can you tell me about a time that you might have felt like an imposter? Well, when you first introduced this this topic, mm-hmm. I thought, mm, no, I don't think I've ever had that. And then, boy, I started thinking. <laughs> and I can the one that comes to mind is when I was asked by a, a dear friend of mine who was a chief operating officer of a major corporation in the health care field. She asked me to serve on the board of directors for the for the company and it was a paid board f- position you know that made it a little more serious than i think just a yeah yeah you know exactly volunteer kind of thing yeah right i i sat there around that board table every month and i felt so small i wouldn't speak up i wouldn't challenge anything I felt like I was such a fraud such an imposter because I'm amongst these people of such stature and, and, and accomplishment. Mm. Like I would look at their, their, uh, LinkedIn profiles and go, Oh my God, they're so important. Yeah. Well, I get that. But I, I, I felt like an imposter. I, I can imagine what that might've felt like. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've had the same kind of experience in a little bit different situation. So in my case, in my life, I should say, I have felt like an imposter off and on throughout my whole professional career. And it's funny because sometimes I think back and about earlier years and I go, I was just going like crazy and and didn't have it. And so why does it show up at these various times? But the most recent time that it showed up for me was a a little while ago when I released my book, Emotional Self Mastery, and had a book launch party. That's what you do is you invite all your friends and you feed them and you pour them wine and you celebrate the fact that your book is now on Amazon. I don't know. In a way, that sounds kind of silly, but you know what? It was a lot of fun. Yeah, Writing a book is something to celebrate. Definitely is something to celebrate. Absolutely. The, the hard work that went into it, the months of writing it and publishing it, and I'm standing there in front of a, a room of 120 people, like, to begin with, that's a little of unheard of in terms of the book launches I've been into, been to. So like 120 people, and I stood there, and I felt like I was butt naked. 
I, like I had no clothes on and people could see right through me and I just wanted to hide. And I was really uncomfortable with the acknowledgement and with the applause. It was just the most bizarre thing. I felt like everybody could see through me like I was a fake, but of course I wasn't because I had identified a need, you know, in terms of writing this book and I'd done the research, I'd written the book. I, I made it up that it was about something else, the, the reason they were there. So I was feeling like an imposter. What, you thought they just wanted to be there to see the country club? Exactly, because <laughs> we held it at a country club. Yeah, it's like, you know, not everybody gets to go to this country club, right? So, yeah, 120 people had never been to the country club. Not, that was not the truth. No. And here I was making myself very small and insignificant. And, you know, the funny thing is I was there and you were not naked. <laughs> It's true. And there are pictures to prove it. And there are pictures Love to prove it. Yes. <laughs> Just in case you were afraid that actually really happened. Yes. And those who were there really had a great time. And I did too. It was a fantastic event. And it's so sad that I couldn't like fully enjoy it because I was too busy feeling like an imposter. You know, I wonder how many artists feel like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are quite a few. Mm. And I think that's why they avoid interaction with the public a lot. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. So, listeners, if you're wondering if you might have imposter syndrome, let me define it for you, and then I'll share with you some of the descriptors and the types, and you can decide if any of these are things you're struggling with. Imposter syndrome is defined as a psychological pattern in which an individual questions their skills, abilities, talents, or accomplishments, causing the person to have self-doubt or to internalize the fear of being found out or exposed as a fraud. Some people describe it as feeling like, like they don't belong in a certain group or position or even in an income bracket. And it, honestly, I felt that at an income bracket at one time. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, imposter syndrome is tied to our false fears that we may not be valuable or lovable. Which is exactly what happened in my story. I didn't feel like I was a val of any value to that to that board, mm -hmm. to that group of people. And if I can give you a contrary viewpoint on that, you might have been the perfect person because you weren't indoctrinated in all of their garbage, if you will. Well, that's an interesting you, thought. Sure. Well, and in yeah. fact, one many years ago, I was hired by the U.S. Army mm -hmm. to be a facilitator of focus groups. Hmm. I have no connection to the Army. And I didn't understand their acronyms and that they wanted it exactly that way. It was a medical corps. I was doing some research on medical readiness or they were doing research and I was the facilitator, but they wanted me to ask the dumb questions because so much goes under the, they just assume that everybody knows what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. When in, when you, if you don't know their lingo and you ask questions, then, you know, and explore further, then new things surface up. And I bet that was what your role was there. You know, your contribution. Now, looking back, perhaps that is, you know, yeah. what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are five different types of imposters. No, we're not really imposters. There's five different types of imposter syndrome. So let's look at it from that point of view and see if any of these behaviors resonate with you. So the first one is the perfectionist. The perfectionist is someone who strives to deliver perfect work and is not satisfied until they do. And then there's the expert. Mm -hmm. And the expert thinks that they should already know how to do everything. When they don't know, they think they need to learn it. Mm -hmm. And I tend to do that. Like Brandy, who works with us as my virtual assistant, consistently reminds me, the how is not your job, Cheryl. <laughs> she, she is going to remind that out of you. At so some point. It's working. It's working. <laughs> She's pro reprogramming me. <laughs> okay. The next one is called the soloist. That's someone who works solo, okay? Not necessarily work solo, but think they have to do it all on their own without assistance. And otherwise, the achievement is not valid. You know, I might think that, but I don't act on that. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I realize the value of a team. I've Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Me too, yeah. So then, of course, there's the superwoman, which aren't we all ladies? I love your cape. Thank you. <laughs> 
Superwoman thinks that they should be able to do it all easily and with perfection. And I suppose that could also be the Superman. Absolutely. Okay. All Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And the fifth and last one is the great mind. So these are people who are intellectuals and judge themselves on their intellect, thinking that if they were really competent in everything, that things would come easily and quickly. The crazy thing is, is I think I have a little bit of all five of these types. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I have a solid three and an iffy four. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the best thing to recognize here is that we're not alone is the first thing. And the second thing is, is that these are symptoms and, and we can work with them and work through them kind of thing. So don't get all labeled, you know, worried about labels, labels. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's not what this is about. Let's take it one step further. Kathy, I want to share with you and our listeners a few more characteristics to try to simplify things because maybe a type didn't resonate with everybody who's listening. So see if any of these characteristics sound familiar in terms of what you do or what you feel or think. Okay. So the first one is experiencing self-doubt. Mm -hmm. We, you do not need to answer yay or nay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just, just Nod check them head. off in your own mind. <laughs> yeah, just check them off in your own mind. All right. Okay. Self-doubt. Okay. The second one is unable to assess your own competence and skill. And it's not assessing it against someone else. It's really about how strongly you feel capable of doing something, you know, kind of deal. Mm -hmm. The next one is giving credit for your success to other people, circumstances, or luck. Many people will say, oh, it's just the luck of the draw. I got mm -hmm. such and such, or I am so lucky. They totally neglect the hard work, the effort, even taking the first step and making something happen. Hmm. And then, you know, of course, if you're a manager, you want to give credit to your team. But you also, your team, without your guidance, would never be able to pull things off. You know, you need to bask in some of that as well. The next one is criticizing your own performance. I think it's always good for us to look and see how can we do things better, but being critical of it is something very different. Fear that you will not live up to your own or other people's expectations. Yeah, I think that's a common one. I think that is too. And that was something I heard Barbara Streisand say about why she didn't uh, give concerts for years. She was afraid she wouldn't meet people's expectations. Oh, wow. Like, hey, folks, I've given you all the best I have. Now it's going to be, you know. Great. Yeah, just like mediocre? <laughs> mediocre I don't think so. No. I don't think so. She's <laughs> awesome. Barbara, well, if you're listening, we love you. <laughs> we think you're terrific. <laughs> all right. Here's one that I will admit I do sometimes. I overproduce. And I try to overachieve. I know people, now I'm, this part I'm not so much me, but um, I know people who keep trying to get certificates and go to trainings and go to education and, you know, get more degrees to what end? They're, you know, they're not using them. It, it's, yes, it's, it's great to learn. However, they're just like accumulating certificates and, and certifications. See, when I read that, um, when we were doing our research, I took it as you were overproducing and overachieving as in giving way too much of yourself. I think there's that's there's that one too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Could be interpreted that way as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people sabotage their own sabotage their own success. Uh, did I mention self doubt? <laughs> I think maybe, at least twice, right? Was that one where you said Yeah, never mind. <laughs> And then sometimes we establish high goals and feel like a failure when we fall short of reaching them. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, this is one of mine. Mm -hmm. This is why in a previous episode, I did not want to talk about goals when it was around the New Year's resolution mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Is because I would set very big, audacious goals, and then I would feel like a fraud when I couldn't make them happen. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't for a lack of trying. I mean, anyway, <laughs> just say it. Just say it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Kathy, what have we learned so far about what causes imposter syndrome? So clearly there's no single answer to why any of us experience it. But I do think some experts think it has to do with our personality preferences. 
while others believe it has to do with childhood influences such as family upbringing or cultural norms that kind of thing absolutely one thing's for sure outside influences can can definitely contribute to feelings of imposter syndrome the environment or the institutional influences are are definitely known for spurring feelings of inadequacy and imposter syndrome and very often bullies will use the fact that they recognize the that you know there's a weakness there in your armor and will capitalize it like you don't belong here and they'll say things like that mm -hmm. that will just feed right into the imposter syndrome yes and and whenever you belong to a group or stereotypes exist there is an increase an increased propensity for self comparison Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so when you think that you don't measure up to those around you, you tend to feel like a phony, which was with my story. There was a there were definite stereotypes. I mean, look, I just laid them out for you. Yeah. And I felt so unworthy and so full of bull. <laughs> so one of the things, though, I did want to touch on is this thing about stereotypes and groups, because there are so many. This happens in so many arenas. Uh, it happened to me when I first joined my professional speakers association group. By the time I got to them, I had been running a business for years and years. It was a tr successful training company. I was, you know, standing up in, in front of people, large and small, groups large and small, facilitating training and teaching. And gosh, being seen as a professional speaker, all of a sudden I had some other definition or I had that, that group on a pedestal and I felt like I didn't measure up. It was just, it was really, really difficult. And I, I assumed that everyone in the group was making seven figures and was, you know, working 300 days a year, and <laughs> maybe not 300, but a lot, you know, everybody, they were all in demand, whether they had just started speaking or they'd been speaking for years. And what's so interesting about that is that, like you said, you had already been a professional, air quotes, professional speaker by doing all these trainings, and you felt so comfortable, but as soon as someone slapped that professional speaker label on you, yeah, I'm a fraud. Exactly. Not a frog. Not a frog, but a fraud. A fraud. Yeah. Mm. Fraud. I felt like a fraud. crazy like what we do up. to ourselves? Yeah. yeah, it was terrible. Well... One other area we need to look at, because we're lo looking at what it is and how we define it, but I think what is important to really look at is what's the cost. Mm -hmm. Because when it hits our pocket or our emotional bank account, that's when we go, wait a minute, we should do something about this. you know. So I, I saw this infographic that I thought was just brilliant, and it described the, the cost, the financial cost. So let's look at the financial cost of imposter syndrome if we don't get it resolved. So the increased stress you experience is worth approximately $950 per year. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but it but, adds but up, But keep right? going. Right. So additional work-related tension is worth an average of $2,200 per year. Yeah, look where we are. Mm -hmm. We're already up there. Yep. Because then the lost sheep equates to... <laughs> that would be lost sleep. But let's go with sheep. Because if we're not sleeping, we're not sheep. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I'll read that one. Lost sleep equates to $2,600 a year. I'm not exactly sure how you get a dollar value for, for sheep or sleep. But anyway, both are important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> and then the lost productivity, $3,400 per year. It's starting to add up, folks. Okay, now, not having the confidence to negotiate better pay, either in the position you're in or transferring for to a different position, $7,500 a year minimum, okay? <sighs> and the cost of just career issues is $18,000 a year. So what does that add up to, folks, in case you didn't have your calculators out? <laughs> Experiencing imposter syndrome can really hit your pocket for the cost of $29,000 a year. And that's just the financial cost. And then, of course, there's the emotional cost. Let's talk about the emotional Let's cost. Let's talk about those okay. because you know you've got that increased stress when you're trying to be perfect. Right, and you're redoing things over and over again. And over if you're and an over. entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and it's costing you time and money. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, that mm -hmm. just doesn't work out well. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, and then there the relationship cost. There, there may be you may need to be validated or somebody else may need to be validated and acknowledged on a regular basis. And if that requires too much energy, that can kind of mess up that relationship. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then there's the reluctance to step into a bigger opportunity due to fear of failure. Mm -hmm. I've got, I've had that. I, I, I have too at times. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that's unfortunate because that door is open for a reason. It's because you are terrific. Yeah, but but then your self esteem dwindles when you don't get credited or acknowledged, um, you know, with with things that you have accomplished, and and instead that kind of thing gets passed on to other people, and mm -hmm. you're kind of sitting there going, "Hey, wait a minute!" Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, which then feeds into insecurity, and then then it happens even less that you internalize your successes. Right. So then you make excuses for them. Oh, well, you know, it really wasn't me. It was the team or I didn't do it alone. And, and quite honestly, I've used that line. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not using it anymore, but I know that I have used it in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are some of the emotional costs. And in fact, my imposter challenge was was just that. I didn't internalize my accomplishments. And I would, you know, if, when I worked with a group or a client and together we would get amazing results, I, you know, instead of acknowledging what I did to bring those results into manifestation, I tended to give credit to others. Mm -hmm. it, I, because I just didn't acknowledge myself, no one else did either. Mm. That was the, the tough part. And, and I guess I expected them to. And in the end, this was made me feel really like I had to constantly produce, constantly create results to prove my value, to prove I was lovable. And those of you who know me, you already are aware of my accomplishments. You know, I've authored two books. I'm a certi I'm certified in several emotional healing techniques. I've presented multi a multitude of workshops and that have created permanent transformation in the lives of those who attended. I've gotten incredible results, results for my clients. I'm the past president of professional organizations. I've run a profitable coaching and training business for 30 years. Really, how much more do I need to prove to myself that I'm valuable and lovable? That sounds so silly, doesn't it? Is this where I should do the mic drop? Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's funny. It, yeah, it's ridiculous that, you know, you have to, I have to prove it to myself, but I know I'm not alone. I know there's other people. Yes. Out there. And, and on, in all honesty, you know, being on your team, you know, I think we've worked that out of you because you did for a long time, not want to, you know, to claim that, you know, you were the actual driving force behind everything, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. I see. And I think that came with a lot of working independently and uh, back to the soloist. I yeah. had to know how to do everything myself by myself kind of deal. Yeah. So yes, that, that has worked out really well. You guys have trained me well. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to admit though, it's taken some years for me to work through all of this to identify where it came from you know, what it was that triggered it, what are the emotions of insecurity or unworthiness that, you know, that show up. And when they do show up, I look to see what memories attach to it because there's always a memory attached to it, at least almost always, if you look deep enough. And what I've found is it's usually an event from my childhood or my younger years. Sometimes I remember specifically a story that my grandmother told about me when I was, about something I did when I was four or five, and it wasn't very pleasant. And I re kind of remember that, but there was no malintent. And she tells it like uh, there was something wrong there. <laughs> and then there were other times that, you know, these memories are rooted in events from middle school or mentors from my early years in my business. But the one common denominator is I took all of those messages from people as criticism. And that was the foundation of my imposter syndrome. Whoa, now that's the drop the mic moment right yeah. there. <laughs> it's been a really, it's been a valuable awakening to know that that's where it came from. So now that you have you know, seen both sides of it and you've worked through it. And I'm sure there are still times you have it even occasionally. now, occasionally. Yeah. Now that you, you have these awarenesses, you know, if someone came to you and said, how do I get past this and needed help? 
where might you begin? First, I would encourage our listeners to listen to next week's episode of the podcast, where I will address that exact subject and we'll take you through a couple of things, a couple of techniques to make that happen. Then I would suggest, unless you want to get started sooner, then I would suggest that what you do is that you schedule a 30-minute discovery session with me and we'll have that link to that that opportunity where you can schedule it in the show notes and we can talk about what's in your way and how we can kick this imposter to the curb. Sounds good. Yeah. So I want to thank you all for listening this week and be sure to tune in next week for part two of the imposter syndrome. It's the how to get rid of that guy. Oh, you know what? Before we quit, I did want to say something. There is a very interesting fact about the word imposter. And it is? Has two spellings, and either is correct. I am P O S T O R, impostor, or I am P O S T E R, imposter. Both are acceptable. Good to know. I know. Well, I felt like the audience needed to know that. Well, you know, a little mm-hmm. extra, little extra value for a little the, extra for their education. Mm-hmm. Thanks, y'all, for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Bye bye. Thank you for tuning into Emotional Self Mastery. We'll be back next week with a new topic to help you reclaim your personal power, self confidence, and inner peace. Please be sure to subscribe to this podcast and comment on this episode. While you're at it, please share it with a friend. We invite you to join our new Facebook group, Emotional Self Mastery Podcast. This group is for listeners of this podcast and is a forum to ask questions, exchange ideas, share appropriate content, and create a community for those who are seeking to regain their personal power, self-confidence, and inner peace. You can search for the group through our Facebook page, Simply the Best Results, or through Groups on Facebook. The direct link can be found in our show notes. To receive a full recap of this week's content with resources and helpful hints, sign up on the first page of my website, simplythebestresults.com. If you know that you'd like to receive some special attention to help you remove the trapped emotions that have you stuck, simply schedule a laser clearing session with me using the link in the show notes or through the Facebook group, Emotional Self Mastery Podcast. You'll find it in the About section. Listeners of this podcast receive a special discounted rate of $50 for 30 minutes of clearing. To connect with me on LinkedIn, search for Cheryl C. Jones. Cheryl is spelled with C-H and be sure to use my middle initial C. And on Facebook, you can find me at Simply the Best Results. You're always welcome to email me directly at Cheryl at SimplyTheBestResults.com. And be sure to visit my website, www.simplythebestresults.com, for more information and inspiration. This has been an Emotional Self Mastery production, created and hosted by Cheryl C. Jones, edited by the amazing Brandy Hockaday, and produced and co hosted by Kathy Holscher. New episodes are available each Thursday on Apple, Stitcher, Google, Pandora iHeartRadio, and most other podcast platforms. Thanks for listening.